Hi, this is Lucy. You know, those of us in show business have our favorites, too. Performers that we admire for one reason or another, and there's one performer in this town almost everyone agrees on, and he's always been my favorite, Mr. Dean Martin. I think the one outstanding characteristic of Dean's that everyone loves him for is his whimsical attitude toward life. He sees the world and everyone in it through an adult, but definitely large coating of whimsy. Even those of us who know Dino and have been close to him for years marvel at his constant good nature. We were at dinner at the Martin home the other evening, and the reason for a great deal of Dean's wonderful outlook on life was very apparent. His wife, Jean, was the reason. Jean made it possible. Dean loves being married, and he adores his children. Four children by his first marriage, three of their own, all sizes and all ages. And he is well aware of the woman-sized job Jeannie has had integrating the two families. Now, Jean doesn't look much more than a teenager herself, and she's about the size of a wind-up doll. But never underestimate the power of this doll. Jean has spent years, profitable years, with these children and has proven many of her theories. Jeannie? Hi, Lucy. You took on a very large responsibility when you became Dean's wife. I happen to know that it's tough enough to be the wife of just one of these, uh, a movie leading man or a fantastic nightclub performer or a romantic singer of ballads. You married all three, <laughs> plus the children. I'd say you've had your hands full. Lots of us had to sit back and just wish you well and watch and pray over the years. May I say, you put us all to shame. How did you do it, Jeannie? Gosh, now you put me to shame a little. It sounds so <laughs> glorious. <laughs> well, um, it hasn't all been glorious. No, I know that. No, it hasn't. But, Lucy, I, I, I think that just having faith in Dean and loving him a great deal, but most of all having complete faith in him, because I never for once, I don't think, saw the pitfalls or the problems as much as maybe somebody else. Oh, I always thought it would be fine. <laughs> That's the way to start a marriage. It would be too overwhelming to know all the pitfalls. No, but by that I meant some of the men in Hollywood, for instance, who are just leading men. Their, their, their life is tough enough. But you have a, a man who does nightclubs, and you have a man who has lots of children. You have a man women are climbing all over. You have a man who's very, very hard at work making pictures and doing all these other things, plus all of his charity things. That in itself is uh, trouble enough for a wife or work enough for a wife. But now you have had to integrate two families, one yeah. that had quite a start on you. Yes, well, you see, first of all, I think I don't deal with the three or four sides that you speak of because I think I deal with Dean, the husband, and the mm -hmm. father. So those other sides are not my problem. They're not my concern. They're as long as he is happy and I keep him happy and the children are happy and the home is happy, the other three will take care of themselves. Ah, therein lies a lot of answers. I feel. Hey, what a good answer. I never expected that one. <laughs> I no. really didn't. No, well, I, I, it's, this is after 15 years of marriage. You know, we have our 15th wedding anniversary coming up, and uh, we have a grandchild. As you know, Dean's first child, Craig, had How a baby. How old is Craig now? 22. <laughs> is he uh, living in this country? He was. Oh, in, yeah, he was uh, in he the army. Mm -hmm. The other uh, three are what ages of Dean's first marriage? Well, Craig is 20, well, well, 22, actually, and the, Claudia is 20. Gail is 19, Dina is 15, Dino is 12, Ricky is 11, and Gina is 7. Boy, you really got I think. all ages. <laughs> I'm not sure. Yeah. yeah, it's a little hard to keep up with them. <sighs> Gina, Dino, and Ricky are yours. Yes, uh huh. They look but so much like you, too. The thing that I notice. Beautiful. Uh, about them is that none of them want to leave home. They're having such a great time at home. They now, do. this well, is indicative of yeah. something wonderful that you've been doing. Well, and, you know, needless to say, their father, it's a delight to live with him. We adore the children, and uh, we have fun with them. They're marvelous. They're beautiful children. They're talented children. They're good children. Do they confide in you, Jeannie? Oh, do yes, completely. How did you manage that? By confiding in them, I think. I could never demand respect from my children without giving it, I feel, to them. You see, I respect them, and I meet them at a halfway. I feel condescending to a child's level, 
is wrong or necessarily demanding that they come up to mine. How so do you meet halfway? How do you uh, prove to a child that you have respect for them? I'm sure a great many of us say that we certainly have respect for our children and their privacy and or whatever. But how do I? How do we get that over to our children? By, I'm not. I'm not very successful at it at this point. By really, uh, well, Lucy, I think by by listening to them. So many parents, and I've I've done it myself. You say yes, 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 or whatever, and you don't really listen. You don't really put yourself into their problem, and talk their language. And a child knows it. A child knows when you're looking at them, but you're not really hearing them. And I think to to really go into their world, to understand them, to listen to them. And once you do this, you become so absorbed with their problem or their joy or their, you know, whatever. You see, I don't feel that a child, because you give them a home and because you take the temperature or call the doctor when they're ill or buy them marvelous gifts, you win their love. I mean, you really have to work for a child's love by being there. I feel not so much when they need you, but when they don't need you. Now, what do you mean by that? Because that's a wonderful thing to say, and by, I'm sure it has a, a... We've got to understand what you mean. By, by being around at the, at the unimportant time, by perhaps uh, sitting down with a book when they're reading, you sit with them and you read. It's by being near them. It's by... Available. Uh, yes, exactly. You know, some children feel they can only go to their parents with the most uh, important kind of a problem. If they come to you at all. Yes. Well, I bridging that, I would say that, that mine know that they can discuss the most unimportant kind of thing with me because I will discuss a great deal with them. Now, I'll ask my children advice on almost everything that that's, I do. That's wonderful. And when we have a problem in the household, I ask all the children. I gather them all together and I must say this is, I think, the greatest thing that's ever happened. Which I decided about five years ago that when I had a problem with one child, I would ask all the other children, I would ask of them, some help in solving this problem. Oh, Jeannie, I, that's Lucy, great. I got the greatest answers in solving most of the problems. These children, each one loving each other as they do and mm -hmm. understanding each other better than I possibly could, mm -hmm. would have the solution and each one would give his or her suggestion and it would come through love, through understanding and uh, Instant results. Yes, but, but just results. Isn't you that see, great? Just, it was right. And then the child, whoever had the problem, would never resent this Coming conclusion from them. because he knew that it was a vote by all. Gee, that involved. sounds great. Uh, it's a pleasure to have so many around at that point, isn't it? And Lucy, you know, something else too, I think is it, it, keeping a great deal of humor. Living with Dean is such a joy and such a, a wonderful sort of fantasy land. I could laugh at everything in the world and all the hardships or any of the heartaches, I could say, because everything was resolved really in laughter. Now, the children have it. Every one of them. What a blessing. I can see now, Jeannie, why everyone in town is raving about uh, your home life, because they they <laughs> see the results of, of your thinking. Uh-oh, my time's up. I'm glad you can be with us tomorrow, Jeannie, because I have lots of other things to ask you about your home and your adorable husband and your children. Hi, this is Lucy. Again today, our guest is Mrs. Dean Martin. Jeannie, I so enjoyed chatting with you yesterday, and I know my listeners would love to know something about your large and beautiful home that is always so teeming with excitement. How do you manage at meal times? It's a riot, I know that, I've been there, but you seem to take it all in your stride. Oh yes, but it's, <laughs> it's more, you know, more the merrier, really. As you know, the children all have friends over, uh, and Dean enjoys it too, and, and uh, of course, he makes all the, the jokes about it. Like our meal is like Boys Town, you know. <laughs> They're lined up, and the, and the amount of bread and milk and, you know. How many quarts of milk a week? I think something like 82 quarts. And, uh, of course, we never know who's going to be there for a night. Now, of course, it's summer, and they can have any number of friends. So I solve that by just getting the sleeping bags and we fill the rooms up, you know? <laughs> but the wildest, wildest thing of all is when we go in to kiss them goodnight. We don't know who's in the room, it's dark, so we kiss everyone. You don't know if it's yours or not. You just step over bodies and you kiss everyone goodnight. And, and then uh, keeping a cook or trying to, I mean, a cook either has to have a sense of humor. She, does, she doesn't really have to cook well. She has to be a short just, order yeah, cook. Yeah, right, and with a sense of humor. She, you know, just, <laughs> At one time, I went to the restaurant union to find a cook because it was impossible <laughs> to ask 
<laughs> no, I did. And I found, I said, give me somebody who's worked in a, a roadhouse, you know, that oh, three hamburgers, two oh. hot dogs, hold the mustard. Found a man like this, and he was marvelous. He would come in and serve dinner with a towel over his arm, <laughs> and he would stack up all the dishes, and it was very successful because the oh, children... Oh, that's that marvelous. Dean says something, that, and it's quite true. When we go out at night, we have to dress early, at least 20 minutes early, because saying goodbye, you know, <laughs> kissing everybody goodbye <laughs> takes at least 20 minutes. And, uh, of course, they all say, well, where are you going? What time will you be back? Well, it, well it's just too unbelievable. <laughs> Well, I'm sure any party that you went to wasn't as much fun as being at home. I know. That might be one of the reasons why we're sort of considered antisocial in, are in you Hollywood. Are really? Yes, we are, because we I just always don't understood why you didn't go to all the parties. I know you're asked to so many that you couldn't possibly go to all of them. But uh, I also believe that you're having much more fun at home. The parties you give are always fun, Jeannie. I notice that you always have all the children around at your parties, too. Yes, we do, because we we want them to, to uh, well, to be honest, maybe we want to show them off. Uh, I do, certainly. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm so proud of them, and I, I, and they enjoy it. And I, again, it goes back to I want them to know my friends and feel included in my life and to make it them shows. feel wanted. How's Dean on, um, on discipline? Well, he, I tell you, Lucy, what he does, he, he is, of course, Italian and, and in many ways, very old country Italian. Very, really? Yes, very uh, purist in his uh, attitude. He, of course, feels guilty, I believe, because he's taken away from home so much so that naturally when he does come home, he should not have the burden of punishing. Yes. He feels guilty when he's separated from the children, so he tries to make up for it and he over lavishes them with whether it be affection or gifts or whatever. Then finally, he will hear or see just so much, and he throws down that Italian fist, and it's over. You know, and the house shakes. And they come in with crying and tears, and their egos are just smashed, and they're Momentarily. Oh, right. But he has the final word, and when I cannot meet certain situation, then I will finally go to him and say, okay, this is your thing now, and you it's in your hands. He comes through with such good, clear thinking and comes to my aid, and the children get over it, and I, it's, it's good, you know. Oh, it's great. Can, they adore him. Every one of them adore him. They just adore him so much, and they, while they don't make much fuss over him when he's home, he's not a star at the house, you know. <laughs> everybody's a star but Dean, and everybody's a comedian. <laughs> There's not a straight man in the house. He has a very tough time keeping any sense of, of uh, <laughs> importance once he's in that house. <laughs> Does Dean's uh, golfing make you want to be a golfer? <laughs> no, well, hardly. By the time he's through with his golf, uh, no, I do play golf. And I just thank God that Dean has it because a so man cannot possibly face the responsibilities and the obligations and the strains that he has. I just thank God it's that he can go thing. out there and it's... Uh, out in the sunshine, him, out in the air. Keeps I'm, him fit mentally, physically, emotionally, and uh, that's what I feel I'm about very Gary's grateful golf. for it. I don't know what men do that don't have hobbies. That, and of course, I'm very grateful that he's in a position where he can get outdoors. Jeannie, uh, how do you handle those persistent in attaching themselves to Dino? Uh, I mean, the feminine clingers. How do you handle that? There must be thousands of them. Well, first of all, I th I don't have to handle them. Dean does. Yes. So that's the first. Yes. Uh, so I have faith in him and his ability to handle it and his discretion and his love for me and his respect for me. So I don't worry about it. I never have, ever. To me, is the epitome of all that <laughs> I want in the man. So I can understand why other women would. But that's... I. I must say that would be his problem. That's a very good Not answer, mine. Jeannie. Your adorable husband has promised to drop by tomorrow. Do you think we could get him to say a few words? A few, I would think, yes. <laughs> About golf, though. Well, we'll see. Thanks for being with us, Jeannie. Isn't she a remarkable person? You know, when you talk to her, it becomes so obvious that her main concern in life is her role as a wife and a mother. As women, I'm sure that's true of most of us, and we do love to talk about our children. I guess I could talk for hours about the ever-changing personality of teenagers.
You know, raising teenagers takes a lot more patience and stamina than most of us have. I should love to hear from those of you who are struggling with teenagers, as I am. I've decided that there's just one thing about teenagers that I'm positive of, and that is we're all swimming in the same tank, and we can all take some lessons. <laughs> so let's get some correspondence on the subject, shall we? And we'll talk about it. I love to get letters. Ever since I was a small child, I could hardly wait until the mailman came, and I have not changed. Today, I look forward to reading my mail with the same eagerness I always did. And for those of you who take the trouble to write to me, I promise I shall do my best to answer. Now, you can send your letter to Let's Talk to Lucy, Desi Lou Studios, Hollywood, California. Now, that's simple, isn't it? Let's Talk to Lucy, Desi Lou Studios, Hollywood, California. Bye.